Thank you so much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here at this wonderful celebration of life and a wonderful celebration as well of those who celebrate and protect the sanctity of life. We're so grateful that you all are here. And we have, yes, applaud yourselves, please. And I think we have really a fantastic program for you tonight. Uh, the Susan B. Anthony List does everything first class, grade A, and tonight is no exception. First, I just want to point out, look around, I mean, what a gorgeous dining room this is. So what a lovely setting and a lovely evening. You all are here because you know how important this issue is. You know how important it is to stand up for the sanctity of life, to remind people over and over that every life has great potential, and to stand with those who protect every life. And the Susan B. Anthony List has been doing this for a very long time. Just in the last year alone, in the last election cycle, thanks to many of your generosity in this room. In 2014, the Susan B. Anthony List and their super PAC, again, thanks to so many of your generosity, raised and spent over $16 million to elect pro-life candidates. <laughs> and we all know that as important as ads are, as important as the right candidates are, we also know that the ground game is incredibly important. The ground game that engages in persuasive conversations, the ground game that gets the vote out. And so Susan B. Anthony created in 2014 the largest ground game ever in the history of the pro-life movement. With over 750 workers, they knocked on over 520,000 doors. They made over 530,000 phone calls. And these are not you know, leaving a voicemail message with somebody. These are live person-to-person -person phone calls where a persuasive conversation occurs. Their efforts helped to elect seven new pro-life senators to office, some of whom we'll hear from tonight. And in the 46 races across the country that they were involved in, they won 83% of the time. Pretty good odds, pretty good odds. So all of you who are here tonight as supporters of the Susan B. Anthony List are investing your time and your money extremely well. I serve, among other things, as the chairman of the Unlocking Potential Project. This was a project last year that engaged women in a grassroots effort in five key purple states. And I mention that because we also supported the Susan B. Anthony List ground game and were so delighted with uh, the incredible results they got on the ground. But I just wanna say to you from personal experience why I think the ground game is so important for those of us who care so much about the sanctity of life. I think one of the reasons that the pro-abortion movement has been successful is because they want to engage in the battle of sound bites and labels. And they've picked some pretty good labels. I mean, pro-choice sounds good, right? And so I think it's so important that we engage in persuasive conversations, not in judgment, not in vitriol, not in labels, but in persuasive conversations conducted in an empathetic and reasonable tone. And that is what volunteers on the ground can do. One of the things that I know from personal experience, because I get confronted with it all the time, and I know you get confronted with it all the time, especially by women. Women will come up to me and say, you know, I really, I, I agree with Republicans on so many things, but I just, 
can't support this extreme pro-life platform of the Republican Party. And the way I answer that always is to say, well, I can respect that. Have you ever read the Democratic Party platform? <laughs> no one has, by the way. So it's really, it's really important that we engage them in that conversation. So I say, well, here's what it says. Any abortion, any time, at any point in a woman's pregnancy, for any reason, to be paid for by taxpayers. Now there are Democrats who want to add to be performed by a non-doctor. And this policy has been succinctly summarized by Democrats, such as Barbara Boxer, as it isn't a life until it leaves the hospital. Do you agree with that? Nobody agrees with that. Even people who think they're pro-choice don't agree with that. And so then I press on in another set of questions, especially to women. How do you feel about a 13-year-old girl needing her mother's permission to go to a tanning salon but not to get an abortion? Women are horrified by this. How do you feel about the fact that a tattoo parlor is more rigorously regulated and inspected than an abortion clinic? What do you think when you go into a bar and you see a sign that says, warning, drinking may be hazardous while pregnant? Hazardous to what or whom? How do you think about the fact that a zygote has exactly the same DNA as the day we die. If we engage in a series of questions, if we engage not in a highly emotional tone, but in an empathetic and reasonable tone, because a woman facing a difficult choice always deserves our empathy and our support, never our judgment or our condemnation. But if we can engage <laughs> If we can engage in a reasonable conversation with people, we can change people's minds. And you know what I know. We are winning on this issue, and so we have to keep going. <laughs> Most of us here, I'm sure, became pro-life by reason of faith or perhaps by reason of personal experience, but the truth is science is proving us right every day, and so we have to use every tool at our disposal to engage in those persuasive conversations. And that's why the ground game is so important. That's why the work that the Susan B. Anthony List did last year had so much impact, because it wasn't about the slogans, and it wasn't about the air wars, it was about people having conversations with other people to get them to think perhaps in a new way, about what really is at stake and how they really ought to think about this critically important issue. So as we begin our program tonight, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for your support of a wonderful organization. And now to begin the program, I am going to introduce three members of the choir of Our Lady of Ephesus from St. John, the beloved Catholic Church in McLean, Virginia. Girls? <laughs> 